a 14-year-old girl seemed to be possessed. When the Hong Kong police received her strange statement, her nightmare, haunted by the shadow of a woman, revealed a horrifying truth in her Hello Kitty stuffed animal. May 1999 A 14-year-old girl named A Fong living in Hong Kong had been experiencing a series of strange and frightening dreams. These dreams not only caused her insomnia, but also made her feel haunted. In recent weeks, a Fong always found herself drawn into a place where a woman was tortured to death, and the recurring images of a girl demanding her head back. Finally, a Fong decided she could no longer keep this to herself. She went to the nearest police station to tell them about her dreams. A Fong waited, hoping that the police would find an answer to her strange dreams. She also hoped that by sharing her story, she would no longer have to face these terrifying dreams. Of course, her outrageous claims were immediately dismissed by the police. They thought they were just meaningless dreams or silly pranks of a teenage girl. However, in the face of her determination, and when a Fong named the woman she met in her nightmare, the Hong Kong police also tried to go to the scene and the horrifying details of the murder were revealed. When the Hong Kong police conducted an investigation into the apartment that a form pointed out, they discovered horrifying traces of a murder in the apartment. They found many parts of the victim's body carefully hidden in the refrigerator. They also discovered a Hello Kitty stuffed animal, however, when they opened it, they found a human head inside. This discovery left everyone on the investigative team utterly shocked and panicked. The victim of this shocking case was Fan Man Yi, a hostess working at a nightclub in Hong Kong. Fan Man Yi's life was far from perfect. Even before the tragedy occurred, from a young age, Fan Man Yi was abandoned by her parents, becoming an orphan with no place to call home. Fan, a girl without proper guidance, fell into addiction from her teenage years and became a prostitute. All her income was spent on drugs at the age of 23. Fan was a hostess at a nightclub but still couldn't kick her addiction. In early 1997, Fan Man Yi met Chan Manlock, a 34-year-old gangster, at a nightclub. They quickly found common ground and not long after. Fan became one of the prostitutes in Chan Manlock's group. The cause of the tragedy perhaps stemmed from a reckless act by Fan. She needed money to buy drugs, so she secretly stole Chan's wallet and planned to escape with 4,000 Hong Kong dollars. When Chan discovered his wallet was missing, he ordered two of his subordinates to capture Fan to repay the debt. His intention was to force Fan to obey and work for him until the debt was fully repaid. Before being kidnapped, Fan returned the wallet and added 10,000 Hong Kong dollars as an apology. However, Chan was not satisfied and demanded she repay 16,000 Hong Kong dollars. Chen ordered his two henchmen to kidnap Fan. To force her to repay the debt, they came up with horrific punishments, tying Fan up and beating her for over a month. Fan had to endure horrifying physical and mental torture. While high on drugs, Chan's group laughed and poured hot plastic on Fan, rubbing chili into her wounds. Even more horrifying, if Fan didn't pretend to be happy or cheerful, they would continue to torture her until she passed out. When they got bored, they would play games in another room, leaving Fun unconscious. Another shocking fact is that a Fong, who reported to the police, also participated in these inhumane acts of torture. A Fong had once witnessed Manlock kick Fan about 50 times in the head, and then she also joined in kicking Fan. Although the extent of the torture that a form carried out was not revealed. It was likely just as brutal. After a long period of torture, Fan passed away at the end of April. 
Her body was left in the bathroom for a few days before the three murderers decided on their next steps. They decapitated her and cut off parts of Fan's body, then put them in bags and stored them in the refrigerator. Seemingly not satisfied, the murderers stuffed Fan's head into a Hello Kitty stuffed animal in the house, while the rest of her body parts were discarded. Chan Manlock and his accomplices claimed that Fan died from a drug overdose, but most experts believe that the wounds gradually killed her. The case was tried with many witnesses for the victim. Wuzi Yuan, a friend of the victim, said that after March 13, 1999, she did not see the victim. Many people living near apartment number 31 also said they occasionally heard screams from that house. The police continued to find horrifying evidence of the crime in the house where the victim was tortured, from bed sheets, curtains, bath towels, to eating utensils, everything had images of Hello Kitty. A fong, to enjoy the law's reward, decided to testify against the three brutal murderers. She detailed the tortures they inflicted on Fan Manyi, and her testimonies became an important part of the investigation. However, Due to the condition of the remaining body parts of Fan Manyi, the police and forensic experts had difficulty determining the cause of her death. They only knew that the victim had to endure indescribable torture. There was no way to know exactly whether Fan Manyi's death was due to an overdose or torture. The three kidnappers and the Fong were convicted of kidnapping, torture and brutal murder. Although the jury believed they had tortured Fan to death, because they could not determine the cause of death, they were only convicted of manslaughter with life imprisonment, possibly being paroled after 20 years. This sentence caused outrage due to the brutality and danger of the murderers. Apartment 31, where the three kidnappers brutally tortured Fan Manyi, became a symbol of horror and crime. It was abandoned for many years. No one dared to rent or live in the same building with the room where such a horrifying case occurred. This apartment, with its scary stories being told and retold, became a place that people avoided. Finally, in 2012, the developer decided to demolish the entire building. Thank you for watching. If you have any opinions about this case, Please comment below.